You may be seated. First reading, Romans 8, chapter 12 through 25. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is not the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the creation will be set free from its bondage to decay and will be obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the labor, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope is that is seen, that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Here ends the reading. I'm walking in, just like, <laughs> We're going to sit on that side now. Well, yeah, I don't know why we're on this side. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to back. She doesn't bite me, but we even want to hear from her. So you can sit without me. She does not bite. But anyways. Okay. Abby. Abigail. Other side. I can talk to her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just going to sit on this side. I guess we're going to go on that side. I don't know if you want it. If I want to go on that side. Here are you guys the All right, seven. Has anybody ever planted a garden? Planted flowers, anything? That's what we talk about planting seeds, right? You planted a garden? Planted flowers? Yeah, planted tomatoes? No. Two couples. Two years ago, planted tomatoes? Yeah. Did you corn? Green beans? Broccoli, peppers, just tomatoes. Ah, so it is just like Now, I know I like to plant the garden. And I like to plant flowers. And I gotta explain this definitely also. So I do like planting the garden. One of my favorite things is to plant a garden. But what happens in the garden? What grows in the garden? Well, plants grow. Hopefully they grow. But there's something else that grows in the garden. You've got to take care of all these wonderful things. Soil. There's soil in the garden. But these are things that look like plants. You might pick them and give them to your mom. Knows. Flowers. What about weeds? Think weeds grow in the garden? Weeds can grow, can't they? So my problem is, sometimes when I plant a garden, I need to worry about going out there and taking care of all the weeds. And sometimes I run out of time to take care of all the weeds, and then guess what happens? Like plant tomato plants, the weeds overtake the garden. So I have a couple items that I can use. One of which is this. I can, this is called a hoe. And I can go out there and I can take this and I can dig up all those weeds. Then I gotta get rid of the weeds. So this takes a lot of work. Honestly, this is a lot of work to use a hoe. So you can go and get. This stuff, weed killer. Now, it takes care of everything, and it kills everything. 
And I mean, when I say it kills everything, that's exactly what it does. It's weed killer for a reason. Now, you see, it also says grass killer. So, here's the problem with weed killer. You take this one little thing, and you start spraying it. Well, when you spray it, let me just spray you guys. Take care of the weeds over here. I see three weeds. One, two, three. I just spray there all three weeds. The problem is, is it might end up on the people behind you. And then I'm going to take care of those weeds also, or they plants. That's what happens with weed killer. You spray it, but it doesn't know a weed. It doesn't know a weed from a tomato plant or strawberries or flowers. It doesn't. Do you think this knows what it's doing when you start spraying it? No. Nope. It just goes wherever you want it to spray. So it might land on the good plants. It might land on your strawberry plants. It might land on your tomato plants, your lettuce. And if it's going to kill weeds, it's going to kill those things also. So you have to be very, very careful when you use weed killer. Don't do it to you. You're not a weed. I've got mom's You sure you're not a weed? He's a weed. Is mom a weed? No. <laughs> Is that a weed? No. That's a weed. Oh, okay. yeah. Now the truth comes out. That's a weed. The mom's not. So, you think this would know the difference between mom and dad? Probably not. It would just spray on anything. So, that's the problem with weed killers. It just sprays whatever it wants to spray. So, you might end up killing some things that are really good things, like your strawberry plants, your tomato plants your zucchini plants, your lettuce, your broccoli, your cauliflower, whatever it is you grow in your gardens, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, it might do everything. So, good idea, but not a good idea. So you have either a lot of hard work, hoeing everything, taking out all the weeds, or you go the easy route, but you gotta spray everything, and then you might kill something you really want to grow. What if I told you this let the weeds grow? No. What do you think I should just let the weeds grow? Why? They might kill your plants. What if I told you Jesus tells us that we should let those weeds grow? You think we have weeds in the church? Well, I heard we have one he's sitting up there. <laughs> it's actually not sitting now. You think we have weeds in the church? You think there's weeds? There are. There's people, because a weed can look exactly like a flower, but they could look like a flower. They could look like a pretty plant. They could look like something. We have weeds in the church, too. And these are people who come to church. They look like they're people that come to perform in the church. But guess what? They're not like everybody else. So Jesus tells us we need to, guess what we have to do, Emily? Let those weeds grow with everybody. We have to just let them grow just like you would in a garden. Let the weeds grow. And then, when the time comes, and we harvest all these things, the weeds are separated from the good ones. So, when Jesus comes back, he will separate the weeds from all the good people. So we just have to let the weeds grow with us. There's a lot of bad people out there, like weeds are bad. They can choke out like they kill their plants. We have to let them grow. And then when Jesus comes back, we will separate all those things. He will separate them. Weeds from all the good things. So we pray me. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for these children and the things that they say. And Lord, we know that they're not weeds, that they are all your creation. And so Lord, we just ask that as they continue to grow, that we don't take out and we don't weed them out because that's not up to us to do. That it is your place to do those things. So help us, Lord, nurture these children as they continue to grow. That they can grow into a beautiful flower that you have created them to be. So be with each and every one of them. Say, seek to know more and to learn more about you. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. Now, do this for you. Since we talked about gardening, I expect you guys to do some more. <laughs> you take care of all those weeds with these things. 
they can enjoy their time with their families, those relatives they haven't seen since probably last year. But you can save her way home also. Lord, we ask that you just be with Lord. Lord, you know what's hailing him this day. Whatever it may be, Lord, just intervene in his life. By healing where his healing is needed. By comfort or comfort is needed. Lord, we also lift up to you. Our dear friend Jim, who we know we're going to be here sitting in the back pew, but is in the hospital suffering from some heart palpitations and pacemaker issues. Lord, be with him, be with his family. Be with the doctors. They work to get everything straightened out. Back on track where it needs to be. Lord, we ask that you be not only with the leadership of this church, but with each and every person in the city. Lord, you know better than anyone all that's going on and all that's taking place. So Lord, we we'll just ask that you put your healing hands upon each and every one. That you lead us, that you guide us, and you direct us all the days of our lives. So we can sing praises and joys and have celebrations for you. Verses 24 through 30, 36 through 43. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, do you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, 
an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. <coughs> Here ends the second reading. <coughs> Get hurt 
and then they'll feel terrible, or worse yet, they may sue. I don't spring clean because I like all seasons, and I don't want any of the other ones to get jealous. I don't put things away because my husband will never be able to find them again. <laughs> I don't do gourmet meals because, well, when I entertain, I don't want my guests to stress about what to make when they invite me over for dinner. I don't iron because I choose to believe them when they say permanent press. And finally, I don't pull weeds in the garden because I don't want to get in God's way. He is an excellent designer. Maybe some of you have read or watched news and wonder, how did our world get in this shape? How did we get to this point? How did we let these things happen? It's one headline after another, after another, after another. It seems the world to us is going crazy at times. Where did those weeds come from? Maybe life circumstances have left you ask yourself, how did my life get to be like this? What has become of me? We could all list the hurts and wounds of our life, the betrayals, the resentments, the addiction, the fears, the loneliness, the anger, the hatred that we have. On and on and on that list goes. We sit back and go, how did this happen to me? Perhaps you face the death of a loved one, or maybe a devastating illness, or some other tragedy, tragedy in life. And you want to know why, if God is so good and loving, why did this happen then? Where then did these weeds come from in my life? I doubt anyone really likes to pull weeds. And as I've been through the children, sometimes I end up just getting so busy, they end up just broke. Where do you get the shortcut out and spray the weed color everywhere? But I'm sure nobody really likes to pull weeds. And that includes God. He doesn't like pulling weeds either. We often live with the assumption that if we do good, Hard work and be nice, everything should work out as we want it to. That's the illusion in which the slaves in today's parable live. They go, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Of course he sowed good seed. They know that he did. <laughs> and that's why they're surprised when they discover weeds in the fields. The weeds have shattered their illusion. They did the good, hard work. Everything should turn out all right in the end. But that's not as it's supposed to happen. Where then did these weeds come from, they ask. There's an urgency to your question when they ask it. They want to know what happened and who is responsible for all those weeds in their lives. And so do we. We want to know who's responsible. That's what we want to know when we discover weeds in our field. Who's responsible for it? We want an explanation. We want someone we can blame. We want someone we can hold accountable for it. And we want that person so we can punish them. Far too often, we see those things happen in our political bickering, our Facebook posts, and our privately held opinions. We will talk about somebody to their face and behind their back. We will stab somebody in their back and also facing them. We talk about people all the time. Because that's the person that did me wrong. And I'm going to get even with them. That's the need in my life. Or we put it on a Facebook post for all the world to see. But Jesus, however, seems less interested in that approach than we are. He doesn't give any that much time or attention. An enemy has done this, he says. That's it. An enemy has done this. He doesn't explain it. He doesn't identify or name the enemy. He doesn't give any instructions on how to find out, drive out, and punish this enemy. He says an enemy has done this. But behind our desire for explanation and the name of the culprit is a truth 
many of us need a right or want to accept. It's one of the challenges of today's scripture. And the gospel always challenges in the way that we think, see, act, and live. It's a challenge to become more than who we think we are. It's a challenge that arises every single time we face the weeds of our life and our world. The reality, according to Jesus, is that our lives and our world are a field in which good and evil, life and death, joys and sorrows, that which we want and that which we don't want, grow side by side. The wheat and the weeds stand together in our world and in each of our lives. That, Jesus says, is what the kingdom of heaven is like. That's good news for us. That means then that despite the things that are in and around us, the kingdom of heaven is still here. The things do not overcome or make absent the kingdom. It may not be the fullest of the kingdom, but it is nevertheless the kingdom of heaven is here. But what about all those things? If the kingdom of heaven is here, what about those things? What do we do about them? Surely, we should do something. We should pull them up. We need to do something. But according to Jesus, let them grow together to the harvest. That makes no sense to us. Why are we going to let it grow? Why should we let it grow? How can we let them be? Weeds are bad. And the wheat is good. We must do something. We have to do something. We need to take a stand. We need to draw a line in the sand and say, don't cross this line. We need to establish a boundary of some sort. Don't you want us to pull up the weeds? The slaves ask the master. The replies, no. For in gathering the weeds, you would also uproot the wheat along with them. But you see, these aren't just normal weeds. It's sometimes known as darnell or false wheat. It grows with the wheat. It looks like wheat. It roots and it intertwines with the roots of the wheat, the real wheat. But the difference is that between the two is not always readily apparent because it looks exactly the same. It seems the separation between the wheat and the weeds is not as clear cut as black and white or as Facebook the media, our politicians, and our personal opinions than what we would often believe. It's not that pure cut. It's not black white. There's a bunch of gray in the middle. But in any event, we are the ones, we are not the ones to make that judgment of what is a wheat or what is weeds. We are not the ones to uproot up from those we see as weeds either. Jesus is clear about that. He says, let them grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvester, first cut the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then Jesus, when he says this, he leaves the ground. Then he goes into a house. What is his disciples? They come to him because they want to know more. They say, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And Jesus tells them, the one who say, the one who sowed the good seed, that's the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvesters, they're my angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out his kingdom. Everything that causes sin and all who do evil, they will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun on the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. On its surface, there isn't much to be said about this parable, except one thing. Make sure you're not a weed. Pulling weeds is an important part, though, of a successful life. 
God is our Savior, and God wants to save us from sin. Jesus shows more interest in growth than extermination, though. He is willing to wait. He is willing to be patient. If we are his followers, we will learn to be wait and be patient also amongst all those needs of our life. While we patiently wait, let's not get too excited about the end of this parable, about the end of the age. Let's not rebel and celebrate the end of the age and the coming of Jesus as such. Let's not say Jesus is some divine he black or evil, because that's not how it is. I don't think Jesus intended this parable to be taken literally, but rather with absolute seriousness. So, do we do nothing? Do we just sit and do we wait? No, that's not what Jesus is saying either. There is plenty to do, and it will be a challenge, just like pulling those weeds. The words that are translated as left them. In Jesus' statement, let them grow, can also be translated as forgive them. Forgive. It's the same words that Jesus spoke from the cross in Luke's account of the gospel. He says, Father, forgive them. Even then, on that cross, Jesus is unwilling to pull up those deeds. There is no place in Jesus' gospel for some Christian vigilante by word or by action against another, or against ourselves. And he said Jesus commands, love. Love your enemy. Love your neighbor. Love those weeds. Love yourself, and love God. Forgive the weeds. Love those weeds. Remember, I said this earlier, the gospel is always a challenge. So yes, you forgive them. You love them. And maybe that's how the weeds then begins to disentangle itself from the weeds and show itself to be true weeds and not weeds. Maybe it's all that word love and forgive. Maybe love and forgiveness are what life and this mixed field of God's kingdom in this world is life. For God is an excellent designer. We pray. Dear Lord, we know that we want to do away with weeds. Those we feel have done something to us. We want to get them back. So how do we do it? We weed them out. We weed them out of our lives. We say things about them. We talk about them. We hold parking lot meetings about them. That's what you're saying. You're saying, let it grow with us. Lord, we ask, as we go through our life, we recognize those needs in our lives. We can love it. We can forgive it. And we can forget about we now judge it. But we leave that all to Help us realize that you are an excellent designer. The Lord will be with each very well this not only today, but each and every day we can come to you and now in the kingdom of this kingdom that is ever like us. Be with all of us to face the weeds of our lives. We can know that you're still there and you love each and every one of us. All these things we must never believe in. Our refuge remains seated in the point in the middle of three days.
love to God as we offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Yes, please come forward.
and let them grow with you. Show those weeds the love, the love of God. It's God has given you that love. It's all God's children said.